Let's explore the top three insights from How to Take Smart Notes by Zonke Arends. One of the big challenges around personal growth and development is remembering the many insights that we've come across throughout our everyday lives from books, videos, podcasts, articles, all kinds of interesting informational sources. And while it can certainly be fun to passively consume interesting information, if we aren't able to recall that information at the moment when it could serve us best, then we're really missing out on the bulk of the value from having consumed that information. Now, this book has completely transformed the way that I think about reading and learning in general. It's far more than just a guide on how to take better notes. It's a complete system for better understanding, comparing, and revisiting insights over time. So it's really about making sure that you get the most value out of the ideas that you come across throughout everyday life. So let's dive into my three favorite insights from the book to help you decide whether or not it's the right book for you. Beginning with insight number one, the better way to store valuable ideas. A great note-taking system should do two things very well. Number one, it should save you from having to remember absolutely everything on your own. You should be able to dump the information that you collect or the insights that you come across into a trusted external system so that you can free up your brain to focus on other things. And number two, it should really support and facilitate the understanding, connecting, and revisiting of interesting insights and information. And ultimately, it's this second step that really separates what we're gonna cover here from traditional note-taking systems. And ultimately, this is what makes for a better and more long-term personal knowledge management system where you're gathering new and interesting information and actually building on what you already know as opposed to just collecting new insights. Now, unfortunately, the issue with many common note-taking practices is that they prioritize prioritize convenience at the point of discovering or identifying an interesting insight rather than making it easy for you to revisit and connect ideas over time. So for example, I've used popular note-taking apps like Evernote or Microsoft OneNote, and they make it very convenient to be able to save links or articles or quotes or PDFs or other interesting bits of information, but it's less convenient to revisit and organize and sort through that information in the future. And the same is true when it comes to physical note-taking, like highlighting a passage in a book or writing a brief note in a margin or even adding a post-it note to indicate interesting sections of a book. What all of these approaches have in common is that they really, like I said, prioritize convenience when it comes to identifying or saving interesting information, but they're less effective when it comes to revisiting that information. And really, this comes down to two things. On the one hand, often these systems are incredibly disorganized You've dumped a lot of interesting information into the system, but it's difficult to wade through it and sort the relevant from the irrelevant. And then number two, in some cases, if you are a very organized person and you meticulously maintain a clear structure for all the insights and information that you come across, this is actually too rigid of a system for us to gain the full benefit of the insights that we've discovered because this is not how our brains operate. We don't sort information into carefully siloed or structured structured areas in our mind. Instead, we make dynamic and interesting connections between information. And that's something that we're going to come back to here in a minute. But the system presented in the book is the slip box method as used by Nicholas Luhmann, who is considered one of the most influential social theorists of all time. He published 58 books over a 30 year period, and that's not including translations or other books, in fact, that were published based on his notes after his passing. And his method simply involved turning interesting insights into bite-sized linkable notes. And he did this in three steps. Number one, whenever he identified or discovered a new interesting insight, he would immediately capture that insight in a temporary or fleeting notes. He'd have pen and paper handy and he would quickly make a note to make sure he captured that idea before he forgot about it. Number two, within a 24 to 48 hour period, while the idea was still fresh in his mind, he would convert that temporary note into a more detailed and yet concise, bite-sized, permanent note. And then step number three is to take that permanent note, add it into his slip box system by either adding it behind a closely related idea, referencing it from a closely related idea, or finally referencing it from an index or entry point note. 
Now, the power of this system isn't simply in capturing more and more insights over time, but rather it's about developing better ideas by understanding, comparing, and revisiting interesting ideas over time. And to really make this system work, we need to focus on two things. Number one, writing better notes, and number two, making interesting connections between those notes. So let's continue on to insight number two, the critical step that changes everything. The way that we construct notes is just as important as the system in which we store them. So building on what we covered in insight number one, let's cover two common note-taking mistakes. Number one, we take a very passive approach to gathering information. So as I mentioned earlier, we might take links or articles or PDFs and just dump them into a system like Evernote, or the same is true of physical note-taking. But this is a very passive approach where we're not really taking the time to process the insight or the information to make sure that we understand it at a deep level. Instead, we're simply just identifying something that's interesting and throwing it into our system so that we don't forget about it. Now, the second mistake that we make is we fail to capture the full context of the insight at the moment we discover it. Because in many cases, an interesting quote or an interesting article might hold specific relevance to something that we're working on at that moment or something that we're experiencing in our lives. But all we do is capture the quote or the article or the idea, and in many cases, we fail to capture the context or what caused that particular insight or idea to create a breakthrough for us. So by ignoring the context or at least not recording the context, we can really miss out on a lot of the value behind the idea. And I'm sure you've experienced this, Going back through notes from the past, suddenly you find an interesting quote, but you don't really remember why that quote was so important to you. This is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. If we fail to capture the context, then we lose a lot of the value that could have been captured had we actually identified that at the moment. Now, the critical step when capturing insights is to rewrite them in our own words. So rather than just saving or noting something that is interesting, we wanna take the time to digest the information and and then convey it in our own words, taking into consideration our own context, and in many ways, stripping away the original context and really just focusing on how that particular insight stands out to us and why it was interesting to us and how it can be applied to our overall knowledge system that we're building with the Slipbox over time. Now, as you might remember, there are three steps in the process. Step number one is to quickly make a temporary note just to identify something interesting. In many ways, this is what we typically do when taking notes. But the second step is what we're focused on here, which is rewriting that insight or that idea in our own words to fit our own context. And this really comes with three significant benefits to this approach. Number one, it's a simple way to test our understanding of the insight. Number two, it helps to lock in our learning and boost retention. And number three, the note will of course include our unique context or perspective. Now, just to be clear, each note should only convey a single idea or insight. So we're not trying to cover multiple things. We want a concise, bite-sized, linkable note. It should be written in full sentences. It should make reference to the original source and it should be easily understandable by anybody else that's not familiar with the original source. And in terms of length, the original Slipbox system was written on individual index cards. So you kind of want to aim for somewhere between one and three paragraphs as concise as is possible while still including the key information needed to understand the insight. So with that in mind, let's put everything together by continuing on to insight number three, the key to deeper learning and retention. Individual insights have very limited value on their own, especially when we only really consider them within the original context in which they were originally discovered. Now, the real power of knowledge and understanding is in making connections between diverse ideas. This is how we build a growing body of knowledge and understanding over time. So we wanna focus more on the connections between ideas than just on the ideas themselves. Now, as I mentioned earlier, common note-taking involves organizing ideas based on topic or theme, or in some cases, based on the original source of that information. So we might have our favorite notes from a book that we've read, 
head, or we might have our favorite quotes or ideas that relate to a specific topic. But this is not how our brains naturally operate. We don't organize information in our heads based solely on the topic or the theme or the original source. We might keep track of those relationships, but we also make more dynamic connections between ideas from alternative sources and across themes and across topics. We have all kinds of interesting connections that we make in our heads. So rather than thinking about everything organized like a library, we really wanna build a dynamic web of information. This is how our brains naturally operate and this is what we wanna achieve when building our own personal knowledge management system like the Slipbox. Now, the original approach used physical index cards and each card covered one idea and had a unique idea identifier. So for example, cards might be numbered 23, 24, 25, but if you wanted to insert a relevant insight between any of the cards that already existed in the library, then you could simply name it 24A or 24B or 24B2. You could dynamically adjust the references so that you could insert a card with relevant cards. And better still, you could create dynamic links between cards by simply referencing its original identifier. So if card number 24 had something to do with card number 196A, well, you could simply reference that unique identifier and show a connection between those two different ideas. Now, fortunately today, we have far better solutions in the form of applications and software. So tools like Obsidian and Rome Research make things much easier to create connections between closely related ideas. And these tools use something called bi-directional linking. So for example, if you have one insight, let's say it's talking about water, and you wanna link it with another insight to do with ice, well, you can simply make a reference from water to ice and automatically when you're browsing the ice reference you can see that there's a link coming from water so it's a two-way relationship by linking a to b you can see that b has a link coming to it from a now there are three reasons why this method is so powerful number one every connection enhances a system and our own thinking at the same time because when we make these connections we're being more intentional about how we want to think about ideas and we're actually Actually, sort of being the architect for our own brain in that we're saying this idea is connected to this idea and by making that connection explicitly in a tool like Obsidian we're now adjusting the way that we think and we're making that connection in our own heads and of course we can go back to Obsidian or other tools like this and actually browse through these connections dynamically to really reinforce those relationships. Number two much of creativity is based on combining and remixing existing ideas so by facilitating these connections, we increase the odds that we're going to have creative breakthroughs where we suddenly realize really interesting connections between what otherwise might be two separate ideas that we might not normally or naturally see the connection between. And number three, interesting connections inspire further exploration and research. So every time we make an interesting connection, we unlock new opportunities. We're motivated to then explore new avenues that might have opened up since seeing those connections. And just as our body of knowledge grows over time, we're of course inspired to fill in gaps and to extend things even further. So that's really the power of the Slipbox system. We build this growing body of knowledge on which we can continue to extend, we can reference back to, we can continue to make interesting connections, and it really allows us to take everything to that next level. Now, let's talk quickly about how to apply these insights in your everyday life. Remember, this all comes down to three steps. Number one, you make a quick temporary or fleeting note at the moment when you discover a new insight or idea that appeals to you. Number two, we take the time within 24 to 48 hours to convert that temporary note into a permanent note that we write in our own words to confirm that we understand the idea and so that we can easily reference back to it fully taking into consideration the original context in which we discovered that idea. And then step number three, we put it into our Slipbox system and we make interesting connections between that new discovery and previous insights and ideas that were already stored in the system. Now, after reading this book, I've been inspired to create my own Slipbox system to store the many insights and ideas that I gather from the books that I read. And I'm gonna be using Obsidian. It's a completely free tool. You can get it at Obsidian. Dot md. I'll include a link down in the episode description box. I've just started on this journey, so I've got a lot to learn, a lot to discover. I've just started to create some of my first 
cards, my first notes in the system. So I do plan to build this up a little bit, but eventually I'm going to share some of the journey, some of the process and my own experiences building a slip box system. So if you're interested in following my progress there and hearing about the things that I learn along the way, definitely subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future updates. But that's it. For this book summary, if you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered here, let me know in the comments section below. And again, be sure to subscribe so you can follow my updates, learn from other interesting books like this, and follow my own journey using the Slipbox method.